Hi everybody, this is Caitlin Albright and I'm here today with the Everson's Curator of Education, Kimberly Griffith. Hi Kimberly, how are you today? Hi Caitlin, I'm really good. How are you doing today? Great, thanks so much for being here today. I know you've been able to speak to our team council a little bit in the past, so we're really happy to have you doing an interview with us today. Um, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about your background and your education? Yeah, sure. So um, I grew up in New York City and um, you know, had some of my first experiences of going to museums there. I remember my first experience um, going to the Museum of Natural History and I think that um, really stuck with me throughout my life. Um, moved on to college eventually and um, I went to a small liberal arts school in um, upstate New York and majored in um, studio art. Um, art was something that was always with me um, growing up. I was always a really shy person and um, I think uh, art was a form of self-expression for me. So I was always doing some kind of art growing up. And also my mom, um, she's really creative and I think she always en encouraged that in me. So she was always giving me some kind of project to do, um, even with cooking and baking. So it was something that was always, um, art was something that was always in my life and um, carried with me um, throughout my life. Um, so in college, as I said, I, I majored in studio art and minor, minored in environmental studies. It was, that was something that, that I was really interested in as well. Um, my focus was painting. Um, you know, I, I always knew that I was interested in pursuing a career in the arts field, but I, I didn't really know what I could possibly do or how I could make that work. So um, now you found yourself working in the museum world, and how did you get into that after not being sure of what exactly you wanted to pursue in the arts? Yeah, so um, after I graduated college, um, I, moved, I, I moved upstate and I, I worked for a small stationery company, and so that was creative in the creative field. But um, in a lot of ways, it wasn't for fulfilling for me. And you know, I spent a lot of time thinking about what I could possibly do. And I was always drawn back to the museum world. Um, and I wound up going to Syracuse University. They have a museum studies program there. And I found museum education. That, I was really drawn to it because it would enable me to really work with people. And I love to work with people. So I thought that would be a great fit for me. That's really interesting. And had you had any previous experience working in the education fields or were you drawn to it more for the people aspect? No, I don't. I mean, my, my background was studio art. So it was <laughs> student practice where, you know, that's where I come from. Um, and I didn't have any specific teaching experience before. <laughs> um, but as I said, what really drew me to it was the the, the opportunities to just, just to meet many different type of people and engage with um, the community. That was what was most important to me. And um, when I was going to grad school, I, I found the Everson and I, I started interning there um, in the education department. And that's where I really fell in love with museum education and where I began my career. Um, thankfully, uh, a position opened up and I've been working at the Everson ever since. So that's over 12 years. So that also goes to show the importance of landing an internship while you are still studying. Um, can you talk a little bit more about what your current role is? What's your typical day like if there is such a thing in the field of education? <laughs> Yeah, so um, museum education and my role is curator of education. And um, at the Everson, what I feel like is really special about the Everson is that education has always been at the center of what we do. Education has always been really important to the museum. So I think, feel like that's really special about the Everson. Um, and we have the chance as educators to uh, engage with the community and engage them in learning experiences through art. Uh, and that's many different types of audiences. So we work with children, we work with teens, um, older adults, um, and we create programs such as classes. We work with an incredible group of volunteers called our docents. And the Everson has one of the first docent uh, organizations um, 
in the history of museums. So that's something else that's really special about the Everson. Um, and we help the, train them so that they can go and give tours to thousands of school children each year. And you know, we also do social programming. We have a summer film series outside. So there's so many different ways that as educators, we can engage with the community. Absolutely, and I know firsthand how, how different and varied your personal role is in the museum and you can go through any variety of things in a, in a day or a week or a programming season. Can you talk more about uh, what is your favorite thing about what you do and what do you find most challenging about it? One of my favorite things. Yeah, so to go back to your other question, there really isn't a typical day. <laughs> uh, every day is different and I think that's what I really enjoy about it. Um, there's not uh, a typical routine, uh, so there's always something different happening, and that's what makes it really exciting. Um, uh, wait, so what was the other question? What do you find most challenging about your work? Yeah, so, you know, it's a not-for-profit. Um, we have a small but really passionate and hardworking team, um, but we have so many different programs, and we're really trying to reach so many different people. Um, that we have a lot of things, you know, a lot of, you know, balls they have to keep up in the air at the same time. And so there's often, you're multitasking, you're like quickly moving from one project to the next, which I think I really enjoy as that's just part of my personality. I, lo I love to multitask, but it can also be challenging just trying to keep everything up and going at the same time. Yeah, I can definitely relate to that. <laughs> um, so can you share any advice you might have for someone who is interested in the field of museum education? And I think that's something that would be especially great hearing from you because like you said before, you didn't come from a background in education, you came from a studio art background and then you had other work experiences that led to this career. So what might you share with anybody who is interested in going into this field? Yeah, so what I have found from in just talking to so many in this field that there really isn't one path to get to, you know, where I am. It's, it's um, I find a lot of people have had this very winding path to get um, to where they are. And I think that's wonderful. I, I there, there doesn't have to be a straight path. So, I mean, you could have a background in museum studies, you could have a background in art history. Uh, art education, studio art, there are many different pathways that can bring you to the museum field. Um, also, just believe in yourself that you can do it. Um, I would also advise uh, interning. You know, as I said, I, I began as an intern at the Everson and that really opened the door for me um, to my position. And it's really important. It also gives you the opportunity to um, kind of test the waters a little bit and to see if a specific um, area is of interest to you. You get where you get your first experience and then you get just get to know people in the field. So interning is very important. Do you have any skills that you look for when you are interviewing interns? Yeah, so uh, first of all, it's just the, the interest in um, the museum field. I really want to support somebody that wants to develop and cultivate a, a career in um, museums. Uh, communication is really important, um, it, especially in education where we're always, you know, there's public speaking, we're, we're speaking to the public all the time. Um, and then just internally with a small staff, as I said, there's so many things going on all the time. It's really important um, that there's clear um, communication because there you know, so many moving parts. Uh, writing skills, that's also something that's, um, that I really look for because we develop content that, you know, go along with exhibitions such as family guides or um, tools for our docents to use and outreach or tours. So writing is really important. Um, and then experience and interest in, in working with people. So, you know, if you want to be a researcher and you want to be in an office, you know, maybe museum education isn't for you because we're always engaging with the public. Yeah, I think that's really valuable information and that's extremely true. You don't know on a daily basis who you might be interacting with. It could be a wide variety of people from all different parts of the community. So I can definitely attest to the fact that 
those kinds of people skills and interpersonal skills are extremely valuable. But I just want to say thank you so much, Kimberly, for taking the time to speak to us. Uh, we really appreciate hearing everything you have to share with us. And we hope to be able to see you in person at the museum again soon. Hopefully very soon. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you.